welcome back to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Mustang SVO. I went car shopping with my parents in 1986. At the time, I was 10. I tried my best to convince my parents to buy something cool. There was no shortage of cool cars at Dixie Ford that year. They had Mustang GTs, Thunderbird Turbo Coupes, and a Mustang SVO in the showroom. My parents went into a closed-door negotiation with the salesman. My mother was a shrewd negotiator that often left salesmen in tears contemplating their career choice. I was left to my own devices in the showroom as child abandonment wasn't really a thing in the 80s. Naturally, I spent my time wisely playing race car driver in the beautiful silver Mustang SVO in the showroom. To my horror and disbelief, we left Dixie Ford that day with the least cool car they had on the lot, a off-lease 1984 Tempo GL. To add insult to injury, when we got home in our new car, the neighbor kid, in his 20s, pulled up in his new car, a black 1984 Mustang SVO. The Mustang SVO had always been a dream car to me. When I turned 16, I investigated them, but I couldn't begin to afford one or the insurance for one. My first car ended up being the dreaded Tempo, which by then had a zillion miles and a blown engine. I turned that lemon into lemonade by trading my high school auto teacher for a recently donated 1976 Cougar XR7. It was rear-wheel drive and V8, and if you squinted, it looked kind of like a muscle car. Fast forward to 2022 and the Mustang SVOs are actually in the realm of affordability and are definitely worth a second look. Introduction Mustang SVOs were a limited production version of the Fox Body Ford Mustang. Ford sold 9,835 of them between 1984 and 1986. Although philosophically different from the specialty Mustangs of the past, the SVO held the halo car mystique of traditional Boss or Shelby Mustangs of the past. History The 1970s oil crisis effectively killed the American muscle car. Stricter emission and safety standards plus the rising price of gas were the final nails in the muscle car coffin. The big three automakers were suffering financially as muscle cars represented a big chunk of their profits. Many of the muscle cars had been discontinued or had their performance neutered to comply with federal emission standards and consumer demand for vehicles with better fuel mileage. By 1979, the Mustang was still soldiering on, but it was a shadow of its former performance car self. With um, high-performance engine choices being either the 140-horsepower 302, or the 132 horsepower turbo four cylinder. The second oil crisis of 1979 caused Ford to drop the five liter for 1980 and 1981 in favor of the 120 horsepower 4.2 liter 255 cubic inch V8, which featured better fuel mileage. The 255 held the ominous title of lowest power ever for a Mustang V8. The 2.3 liter turbo was the sole um, performance engine available for the Mustang, but it was plagued with reliability issues. The 2.3-liter draw-through turbo carbureted's main issue was the carburetor itself. Generally, in a naturally aspirated car, a poorly tuned carburetor will hurt performance and mileage, but in a turbo car, a poorly tuned carburetor spelt certain death. The relatively high compression ratio for 1979 of 9 to 1 combined with turbo boost pressure and out-of-tune lean running carburetor led to overheating, melted pistons, and seized turbos. Then new turbo technology paired with turbo noob level experienced mechanics and 50 feet of leaking vacuum lines and mysterious often failing electronic and vacuum mechanisms likely didn't help either. I don't mean to poop on the 2.3 liter carbureted engine. With a modern methanol injection system, modern fuel, modern synthetic oil, and wideband monitoring gauge, these plenty cool early Ford turbo cars can be quite fast and fun. The other benefit of time past is the knowledge base of these cars is much greater than it was in 1979. Like many automotive advancements, the early Ford turbo cars were just ahead of their time. In the fall of 1981, Ford formed Special Vehicle Operations Department, SBO. The division would oversee both the company's production of limited edition high-performance street legal vehicles and run their racing program. The 2.3 liter turbo was an option through 1982 in Canada, but was discontinued at the end of 1981 in the States. The Mustang took a major step forward in 1982 with Ford putting a new emphasis on its sportiness and performance. The 157 horsepower 1982 Mustang GT 5 liter was a triumphant comeback. And Ford exclaimed, the boss is back. I'm not going to talk about that though. And you know why? Because that's another story. Mercifully, an improved version of the 2.3-liter turbo appeared in the new for 1983 Turbo GT. 
The revised engine featured a 1980s turbo-friendly lower compression ratio of 8 to 1 with forged aluminum pistons. This was down from the previous 9 to 1, which was considered way too high by 1980s turbo car standards. In comparison, the modern 2.3 liter EcoBoost Mustang has 9.5 to 1 compression ratio, which is made possible using variable camshaft timing and other modern sorcery. Other improvements to the 1983 2.3 liter included an engine mounted oil cooler, a lighter flywheel, and upgraded valves more suitable for an extremely high temperature demands of a turbocharged engine. The biggest improvement was the new Bosch electronic port fuel injection system controlled by EEC5 which was Ford's world-leading and latest electronic engine control computer system at the time. The system was used to monitor and or adjust engine idle speed, injection timing, fuel enrichment, and control of all the various emission devices. With the recommended premium fuel and 10 pounds of boost from the turbocharger, the Mustang Turbo GT produced 145 horsepower. Perhaps more importantly, the engine produced its 145 horsepower without the drivability and reliability debacle associated with Ford's first attempt at turbocharging the Mustang. Mustang SVO delayed. Initially, Ford planned to launch the Mustang SVO in mid-1982. But then they dropped a bombshell when they announced the Mustang would be phased out, replaced by a front-wheel drive sports car built on the Mazda platform. Public outrage led Ford to continue building traditional rear-wheel drive Fox Body Mustangs and renamed the Mazda Ford joint venture the Ford Probe, which was released in 1988. Although the front-wheel drive Mazda Stang idea was short-lived, it delayed the Mustang SVO launch until the fall of 1983. Mustang as a 1984 model. The SVO team soon realized that launching a specialty Mustang alongside Ford's other new models would only ensure that it was lost in the shuffle. SVO decided to introduce the Mustang SVO in April of 1984 as a 1984 and a half model instead. Mustang SVO Engine Development SVO's first limited edition high-performance street legal vehicle was the Mustang SVO. With the fuel crisis in recent memory, SVO engineers were still concerned with issues such as emissions and miles per gallon figures. With this in mind, SVO passed on 5-liter V8 engine development. The 5-liter would have to wait until 1993 to get the SVO treatment, which was renamed SVT, Special Vehicle Team, in 1991. The 1980s SVO engineers focused on the 2.3-liter 4-cylinder engine that originated in the Ford Pinto and Mustang II. The four-cylinder engine helped with weight distribution being mounted behind the front axle, which was how Jesus' carburetor envisioned a proper sports car. Along with improved handling, outfitting the engine with an air-to-air -air intercooler, and an advanced computer-controlled fuel injection system helped increase the horsepower to 175. The SVO was fitted with a fuel-grade switch on the dash. This switch enabled the driver to adjust the vehicle's performance level based on the octane level of fuel they were using. If you had a tank full of the good stuff, 91 octane gasoline and the rocker switch set to the premium position, the Mustang SVO would allow 10 PSI of boost to 2500 RPM and 14 PSI of boost above 2500 RPM. If you filled the tank with regular unleaded gasoline and had the switch set to the unleaded position, NOx sensors would retard ignition timing and limit max boost to 10 PSI. The SVO had the distinction of being the first intercooled engine fitted to an American production car as well as Ford's first engine with multi-port fuel injection. A legit Hirsch shifter was standard equipment, which improved shift quickness and shift feel. Fine-tuning the computer and water-cooling the turbocharger increased power to 205 horsepower for 439 of the 85.5 SVOs. Ford dialed it back a smidge to 200 horsepower for 1986. The SVO package Besides the totally rad turbocharged engine, the SVO featured several performance modifications over the standard Mustang. The front suspension geometry was modified, and a quick ratio 15 to 1 steering rack replaced the standard 20 to 1 rack. This was the same ratio V8 Mustangs had, resulting in 2.5 turns lock to lock. Initially, Outback, a 7.5 inch traction lock axle with limited slip and 3.45 to 1 gears was added. In 1985 and 1986, SVOs featured a 3.73 to 1 ratio 7.5 inch axle for quicker acceleration. A new to Fox body, Mustang 5 on 4.5 bolt pattern ventilated four wheel disc brake system was swiped out of the Fox body Continental Mark 7 parts bin, replacing the poverty spec Mustang and Mustang GT's 4 on 4.25 bolt pattern disc drum setups. SVO specific pedals were used to make heel and toe downshifting easier. Suspension wise, Ford threw the Coney catalog at the SVO. The suspension system featured custom tuned adjustable front struts, rear shocks, and from 85 forward, Coney quad shocks. 1984s used Mustang GT slapper bars. 
5 bolt pattern, 16 by 7 inch aluminum wheels with P225 50R16 VR Goodyear European NCT radios were used in 1984. Goodyear had just developed its radically new Eagle Gatorback performance radio. First year production of the tire was exclusively for the then new C4 Chevrolet Corvette. In 1985, the SBO got its dedicated Gatorback radials, which were unique to the SBO. The 5 bolt hubs, rear disc brakes, 16 inch wheels, quad shock rear end, and conies were all Mustang SVO firsts. Interior In typical Henry Ford fashion, you could get the interior in any color you wanted, as long as you wanted charcoal gray. You did get the choice of leather or cloth. The interior featured a leather wrapped tilt steering wheel, shift lever, emergency brake handle, Lear Siegler, adjustable bucket sport seats with lumbar supports, power door locks, windows, air conditioning, and a bumpin' premium sound system. These items were all standard equipment, which was highly unusual, as at the time these items would have been optional equipment on any other small American hatchback. If you had deep self-loathing, Ford had you covered, though. You could order the competition prep package, which differed year to year, but essentially deleted most of the luxury items to save weight. Because race car. I was hoping to nail down what exactly the competition prep package was year to year, but after a few hours of research, it's still as clear as mud. If you are a geek like me with too much time on your hands, competition prep is an interesting Mustang rabbit hole to go down. Styling. The SVO had many exterior changes compared to the standard Mustang and Mustang GT. The 1985 and a half and 1986 Mustang SVO had new model specific aero headlights. The SVO was intended to have composite flush headlights from the get-go, however, the Department of Transportation and National Highway Traffic Safety Administration had not yet approved them for use. They were approved in early 1985, hence the 85.5 and, and 86 SVOs had flush light, and the 1984, early 1985s had the old-school seal beam headlights. Other SVO-specific items included the hood, which had an asymmetrical hood scoop in it to direct air into the top-mounted intercooler. It also had a specific grille, smoother sail panels, thinner side moldings, small rear wheel spats, and a totally awesome biplane rear spoiler. The SVO-specific pinstripe taillights also reappeared seven model years later on the 1993 SVT Cobra Mustang. Stock yeah, yeah, performance. Yeah, 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 yeah. Racing. SVOs are off to drag race. Twelve point five hundred and seven. Wow, that SVO took that EcoBoost Mustang to Gapplebee's. The SVO is perfect for autocrossing. Perhaps the best use of an SVO is to get it out on a nice twisty country road. Wait, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! Run. Buying a Ford Mustang SVO. The drivetrains are known to be very robust and have no significant problem areas. The body, on the other hand, has some serious problem areas. Rusted front shock towers are a common issue. Be sure to check this area very carefully. Rear torque boxes often get torn, so check those too. Look at the windshield pillars and rear quarter windows for cracks or bulges. This is a clear sign of a twisted frame. Rusted out floors are also common. Thankfully, the SVO and the regular Mustang share all of these parts, and they are inexpensive and available new. If you decide to buy and repair a damaged car, Haggerty claims the average value of a 1984 SVO to be $18,500. 
Although they say one in fair condition is worth $10,600. They also claim a 1985 Mustang SVO to be worth $25,300, with fair condition ones being worth $14,300. Finally, Haggerty claims the 1986 SVO's average value to be $23,000, with fair examples going for $12,700. Whichever one you choose, you had better do it now as these cars have jumped in value considerably in the last year. They are collectible now and will continue to be highly collectible in the future. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars and my story of the Mustang SVO. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment.